Views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Get ready to rid yourself of all that is weighing you down and holding you back from living the life you want for yourself. Coming Clean, The Art of Transparency with Catherine Moss is a show for women in recovery who are ready to live life on purpose. Tune in and let Catherine help you live your truth one day at a time. Now here's your host, Catherine Moss. Hello, everyone. Good morning or good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. I'm Catherine R.T. Moss, and you're listening to Coming Clean Radio here on Transformation Talk Radio. Um, so as said in the intro, this show is for all women out there who are ready and willing to step out from the shadow of their lives and start living the life that they really want to. Um, this show is called coming clean in creating this show title. I had addiction in mind, but I really wanted to address all kinds of, of ways of living that would be in any way destructive or um, you know, untrue for anyone. So to really come clean can be breaking away from addictions or, um, just ways of behaving that aren't serving you. So it can be an addiction or it can be anything, anything that you don't want in your life to come clean from. And I made a promise to myself at the beginning of my sober journey, um, which was in October of 2012, when I became sober from alcohol that I would live a transparent life and to be, to, to empower and encourage other women who want to break free from the pain and suffering in their lives. I no longer wanted to hide or lie or pretend I was something that I wasn't. And I spent a long time living in fear because I, I've also heard a lot of people say that addiction and then, and any of those types of um, behaviors is really a fear of life. So I was really definitely afraid of life, afraid of failure, afraid of success as well, uh, desperately seeking approval from other people and also not really feeling safe anywhere, not in my body, uh, my mind or anywhere. Um, so welcome to the show. Hope you enjoy it. If you like the show, please like the Coming Clean Radio Facebook page and also visit my website at katherinemoss.com, which is on the Transformation Talk Radio page on my page. So on uh, my website, you can sign up for my monthly newsletter and I also have videos of a lot of meditation techniques that I, that I teach as well as yoga classes, um, some MP3 files of yoga Nidra, which is a relaxation and also my archived shows from coming clean radio, all at my website, katherinemoss.com. So yeah, please check it out. So each week on coming clean radio, I normally, I invite a guest on the show to share their unique truth and their authentic message in coming clean and whatever that means for them. However, today I am flying solo and I've been speaking on my own for the a few of the last few episodes and being a bit spontaneous. It's definitely a different feeling um, interviewing guests and learning. And I've had so many interesting guests on the show. If you're just tuning in for the first time, I encourage you to go back and check out some of the archived shows because we have some really, really interesting guests on the show. And so, yeah, it's a bit different. Um, today I'm talking, I'm feeling really inspired. Um, I'm, I'm a yoga teacher here. I live in Zurich, Switzerland. I'm originally from the United States. I live in Zurich, Switzerland, and I teach yoga a few times a week and meditation. So I'm really inspired since um, being on a, being in recovery and, and experiencing addiction, um, you know, from, from my youth up into adulthood 
and during that time, even, even in addiction, I was, I was practicing yoga because yoga has become, you know, so, so popular in mainstream culture. And I'd like to say that whenever I talk about yoga, I'm, I, I want to make sure that, um, you know, I'm not any, I'm not a, like a yoga guru or anyone like this. Um, I just enjoy it and it's given me a lot of positive benefits and I, would never say that one style is better, one style is worse, or any something is good or bad. Um, I'm not here to criticize or to critique anyone or anything. Um, but it's become very popular in culture, in mainstream culture, and it ties very, it ties in so well with recovery. And there are a lot of um, programs out there connecting the two because they are so they have a lot of parallels. I had Nikki Myers, who is the founder of Yoga for 12-Step Recovery, on the show a few weeks ago. And I encourage you, if you haven't heard that show, to go back. It's very interesting. She talks a lot about um, somatic body work and the issues being in the tissues. So really working with the body to um, to uncover those past feelings. Because a lot of people say that giving up the addiction is, is not your main problem. It's... Um, or, you know, once it goes away, um, only then can you start to uncover those reasons that you, um, that you started in the first place. Yeah. So, um, yoga has become very popular and I, I, I teach a bit and I noticed that it's also very popular to have a workout and are push ourselves very hard. And I have that experience myself and I've experienced other pe- others in their practice, um, really, really wanting a workout. And we have to ask ourselves, why are we doing this? Um, in my own experience, I went and I did a yoga teacher training and before that it was, and I've talked about this before on the show that, um, I really just, I didn't, the larger tenets of the yoga philosophy in the, in the teachings, I wasn't so interested and I didn't really understand what they were. I really wanted to just work out my body and I wanted to sweat and which I, which is wonderful. Um, but that's just one part of it. So when I, once I went into yoga teacher training, it was a very much more of a, a softer approach. And it was very difficult for me at first because I always just wanted to push and push and push. And, um, and it took a while for me to to really soften and to relax and and just be okay with um with not trying to bend over backwards literally and figuratively or um hurt myself in the process and so we have i i had to ask myself like why am i working and pushing myself so hard to do this um and i know that personally that when I push and push and push in any different way, it's like, I I always think of it as a volcano, um, that I'm like pushing things down and I'm like striving and I'm trying really, really hard. Or I, you know, I start working out too hard or I, with the food or with anything before it was, you know, with drinking, it's like a volcano. And the more that I, that I push down, the larger the explosion will be later on. And I know this about myself. So it did not come easy for me, um, to taking this softer journey because I'm not a person who naturally, um, practices self-care. Um, I also did another training for, it was a like women's, um, yoga, it's called well women yoga and taking it, taking it easier and and practicing self-care with the body. And I think before it would have been really hard for me because it was such a more of a gentle approach. But that can be very, very beneficial to us, that our body needs rest and our body needs care. So when we think about it, exercise is not necessarily self-care. If, we're take, if we think about taking care of ourselves, you know, like, oh, well, you know, I, I eat well and I, I exercise. But in addition to that, what else are we doing? What else, um, how do you nurture yourself? Um, I used to punish myself with, um, with exercise and I didn't, 
um, find anything, you know, I didn't have any type of a nurturing practice in my life. And through, you know, developing a yoga practice that's in definitely, you know, nurturing and having more compassion for myself has really helped um, becoming more balanced and not so up and down and going in. And then I will fall into a restrict and binge cycle of restricting and then just going off and, you know, going a little crazy with, with my behavior. So for me, it's, um, again, that volcano, I want to maintain balance with, um, and, and treat myself well and not be so militant because, um, the militancy doesn't work, um, as long, I mean, it can work for a while. Um, again, I'm only speaking from my, my personal experience, um, that, um, we have to strike a balance, you know, um, I like to push myself hard, but I also know that it can't be all the time. It has to be a balance of, of self care and nurture and balanced with, um, pushing yourself and, um, you may be challenging yourself physically, mentally, however you, however you find is the most fun for you that you enjoy. So today I am going to be talking about yoga, surrender, and santosha, which is something that you may or may not have heard of before. Um, it's a niyama from Patanjali's Yoga Sutras. Um, it's a little bit about yoga philosophy. So I'm going to get into that later in the hour. So we're going to take a quick break. You're listening to Coming Clean Radio with myself, Catherine Artimas. Again, we're going to take a quick break and then we come back. I'm going to continue my conversation <laughs> with you um, regarding surrender and later on Santosha. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Do you want to achieve your goals? Do you want to strengthen relationships with others? Do you want to improve your financial status? Colette Marie Steffen is partnering with Mark Kettenbach to bring you an energetic upgrade online experience launching in April. Unfold and develop your full potential. Visit energeticupgrade.com today for more information. That's energeticupgrade.com. Chris Stainis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. Get ready to rid yourself of all that is weighing you down and holding you back from living the life you want for yourself. Coming Clean, The Art of Transparency with Katherine Moss is a hit show for women in recovery who are ready to live life on purpose. Tune in and let Katherine help you live your truth one day at a time. Live each Tuesday, 9 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Shine on Radio. Find Your Shine with Kelly is the show that celebrates what makes you, you. Join co-hosts Kelly Wadler and Dr. Pat Basile as they break down how to brilliantly fuel and move your body and love what makes you shine. Kelly is a professional arts and wellness coach dedicated to helping brilliant women find their confidence, energy, self-love, and shine. Tune in to Shine on Radio with Kelly and find your shine on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Song of the Heart, Walking the Path of Light, from author and healer Francine Vale is available now. Through Francine's life story, we learn how imperative it is to love one another. Once this simple truth is learned, peace on earth will prevail. Song of the Heart is a life lived and a story told for this purpose. To learn more about Francine and her amazing gifts, or to order your copy of the book today, visit angelsandlightbeings.com. 
The doctor is in. Tune in to the hit show, The Psychic Love Doctor, with host Deborah Lee. Deborah's life affirming, highly perceptive reading method has taught Deborah how to zero in on specific problems with relationships, career pursuits, and current roadblocks to success and happiness. Join Deborah Fridays at 2 p.m. Pacific and for a special broadcast the second Thursday of every month at 11 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. We're back on Coming Clean Radio with myself, Catherine Artimas. Again, if you like the show today, please, I encourage you to like the Coming Clean Radio Facebook page. Also, this show is on iTunes, and I believe you can find it under my name, Catherine Moss. So again, um, website is catherinemoss.com, where you can find all of my upcoming video, um, upcoming shows and my archived shows, as well as my videos, and then you can sign up for my newsletter. So today I am flying solo without a guest and talking to you about yoga, surrender, and santosha. I really like to talk about recovery and yoga because, as I said before, I think that they are so paralleled and they're very complementing to each other. So moving into surrender, what does it mean to surrender and why is it so hard? I think that today's um, world, no one wants to think about surrendering. Like, what does it even mean? People want to feel like they have control. And again, I can only speak from my own experience that it's, it's scary not to think that you're not in control. Like, for example, I don't really like flying in planes all that much because I can't control what's going on. Um, it's, comforting to think that you are the one, you know, controlling the situation. However, um, we talked about this, um, a few episodes ago when my, um, friend Rebecca Watson was on the show and we talked about kind of like un, you know, taking the releasing the, like, you know, the death grip of control, you know, just like, ah, oh, why is it so hard? And a lot of people say, oh, they're a control freak. They're a control freak. Well, you know, I'd, I never would consider myself someone, you know, that's con controlling, but I think that because, um, as I said before, long time living in fear and afraid of life, well, the more that we can feel like we're in control, the less, um, afraid we feel like we might be. And that's been my experience. So yeah, it's, it's very difficult. Um, I think it's, it's easy to, to say, um, okay, you know, I'm giving up control or I'm, you know, I'm, I'm surrendering, um, to do that intellectually is one thing and to really, to really embody it and to live it is quite another that I've experienced. And why is it so important to surrender? And, um, when I think of, uh, of the word surrender, um, maybe like you guys, I think about, um, you know, images of, of religion, you know, like a, um, organized religion surrendering to, to God or, um, like a prisoner and, and white flags. Basically you think of weakness, that surrendering is weak, that you failed, that you're not, um, the, you know, succeeding and you're not the winner and who wants to admit defeat. Um, in a lot of recovery programs, that is what's, um, required if you will, of you. And a lot of people don't want to do that. So, you know, why is, um, is it important to surrender? And I was just looking online and looking at some of the, um, of the definitions for surrender. And one of them is to agree to stop fighting, hiding, resisting, because you know, you will not win or succeed <laughs> or to give the control or use of something to someone else or to allow something such as a habit or desire to influence or control you. So all those three don't really are not very desirable even to read. I'm like, who wants to do that? No one wants to admit defeat and no one wants to feel like they're surrendering. And we need to ask ourselves, does surrendering mean that we're giving up who we are? Are we going to 
lose our personalities? Are we going to be, you know, just boring people? Um, who will we be if we surrender? And, um, so as I said, um, a lot of us coming out of, um, addiction, seeking perhaps, um, recovery groups are required to relinquish and surrender and, you know, take on powerlessness. And there can be a lot of resistance to this. So it's, like I said, it's very easy on an intellectual level to, to think, okay, you know, I'm giving up the control, I'm giving it up, but, um, but, you know, really embodying that and, and understanding that on a, on a level, on a deeper level can be really challenging. So, you know, what is the process of surrender? Um, and how can it help our recovery? Because a lot of times, in my own opinion, I'll say that, um, I, when I first got sober, I relied a lot on my self will and it wasn't really working out very hard, well for me. And it was, a, it was an internal struggle all the time. So I really, and I, I, and I also lived my life that I was pushing and pushing and I wanted certain things to happen. And I talked to this, I talked about this with Liv Pinelli when she was on the show that we, when we come out of recovery or when we're in recovery, we think that it's just going to be like an, like an incline, you know, like I was down here and now I'm moving on up, but it's not always like that, you know? So I wanted to just push and push and I wanted things to really happen for me because the alcohol was out of the way now and I thought my life was going to get better, but, um, I still had like a death grip on what I wanted things, how I wanted things to happen and what I wanted my life to be like, but you know what? Um, <laughs> I don't know what, what things are going to happen. And like the <laughs> recovery is just kind of like up and down and to the side and all over the place. And that's natural. You know, sometimes I felt like I was really flying. And then sometimes I really feel like I'm sinking and I'm going into a hole and I'm like, what is going on here? I thought that you know, getting into recovery it would, I would be like, my life would just like be so much better all the time. And it is, but sometimes it can still be difficult, be really, really hard. So, and that's just a realistic way of looking at it. So I wanted to read, um, I have a book here. Um, it's called affirmations for self healing by Swami Kriyananda. And I really, really love this book. It's, um, I read often. I also use it in my classes and it has just a few um, thoughts on different qualities and has a very interesting um, little bit on, it has non-attachment and I really feel like non-attachment and surrender are the same because how can you surrender yourself um, to whatever it is that it could be God for you. It could be like your higher power. It could be universe. It can be anything that you want to surrender to or, you know, take like non-attachment. So be unattached to, um, the world around you. So in, in here, um, he does use the word God. However, um, you know, if you would like to, um, change those words in your mind, you're, you can do so. So he says, nothing is ours. No one belongs to us. Mentally, we should make a bonfire of our love for God and cast into it all attachments, all desires, all hopes and disappointments. It helps mentally to examine one's heart every evening and liberate it anew of all desires. Pluck out from your heart any burrs of new attachments that you find clinging there. Cast them joyfully into the fire of devotion. Pray energetically. I destroy all my attachments. They are no longer mine. I am free in thee. So I really like this. Um, and I like that it's nothing is ours. Nothing belongs to us. You know, because how can we really be free and be and surrender ourselves to any type of a higher power 
or higher good universe if we're still so attached to the world around us, attached to outcomes and, you know, desires, hopes, disappointments, and making it a, a ritual each evening of, of kind of reviewing the day and like, how did, how, did I surrender? Um, what was I attached or, you know, and looking at that without judgment, So we're going to take a quick break. My name is Catherine R.T. Moss again, and you're listening to Coming Clean Radio, The Art of Transparency. And when we come back, I'm going to talk a little more on Santosha and yeah, a little bit about yoga philosophy and how it ties in with, um, with recovery. I think you'll find this really, really, really very interesting. So um, stay tuned and we will be right back. How would you like increased health and vitality? How would you like to avoid the onset of disease as well as slow the aging process? This is all possible through a simple, safe, and natural process. Every day we are either moving toward wellness or away from wellness. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. I'd like to be your partner in achieving optimal health. Contact me now at MaryJaneMack.com or call 425-392-0659. Visit MaryJaneMack.com. Get ready to rid yourself of all that is weighing you down and holding you back from living the life you want for yourself. Coming Clean, The Art of Transparency with Katherine Moss is a hit show for women in recovery who are ready to live life on purpose. Tune in and let Katherine help you live your truth one day at a time. Live each Tuesday, 9 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Tune in to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly Neff. This hit show will illuminate your senses and empower you beyond your daily stressors and hardships. Renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly will captivate you with far-reaching topics and amazing guests as you wake to the greatest version of yourself. Learn to tap into your intuitions, think critically about our world, heal emotional and psychological wounds, and follow your passions to live your dreams. The Lucid Planet. Welcome home. Visit lucidplanetradio.com for more information. Are you ready to stop stress, anxiety, and low self-esteem from running your life? Join award-winning author Dr. Friedemann Schaub for Empowerment Radio and learn breakthrough solutions to switch out of survival mode and approach every day with great ease, joy, and purpose. Tune in the first and third Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific to Empowerment Radio with host Dr. Friedemann Schaub on Transformation Talk Radio. Visit thefearandanxietysolution.com to learn more. Almost everyone at some time in their lives ask themselves, what am I? Most of our questions are ego-generated and simply don't address the problem of our false self. It's time to relax your ego and embody your soul. Dr. Dan Cohen, neurologist, inventor, and author, has created tools to awaken a new way to transform from who you thought you were into what you truly are. Visit toolstoawaken.com today. Hi, I'm Tim Darter. And I'm Steve Kramer. Join us on Spirit Fire Radio. Discover how to add the mechanics of meditation to your day. And watch yourself connect in a whole new way. Find the amazing moments in life's routines that often pass us by. Add to your awareness with Spirit Fire Radio. Tune in each Wednesday at 9 a.m. for your weekly guide to practical mindfulness. And to learn more, visit www.spiritfireradio.com. Welcome back on Coming Clean Radio with myself, Catherine R.T. Moss. Today I'm talking um, about yoga, surrender, and santosha. So 
I've been talking about how yoga and recovery have, have so many parallels um, together. They complement each other so well. And there are a lot of people these days doing a lot with, um, with recovery and of the practice of yoga, the practice of union with yourself. Um, I know that I had Nikki Myers on who talked about yoga for 12 step recovery. And also Tommy Rosen does a lot of, um, yoga, um, and recovery. So, um, he has recovery 2.0. So he's a really good resource as well. I think that they are so, they go together so well because, they are both yoga, for example, is a very internal practice and non-denominational. Um, a lot of people who are coming into recovery, or if you'd like to say discovery, as Tommy Rosen would say, or uncovery, uncovering of what was, um, what was hidden. It's, it's not uh, a lot of people, um, might find it, uh, off-putting or discouraging, um, a bit too much about, um, about religion. However, this is, you know, yoga is non-denominational and, um, it's search- searching for the truth that's already lying within you and not relying on, on outside sources to, you know, bring you happiness and contentment and joy and feeling, feeling our feelings. So allowing them to go through the body, experiencing them. I mean, that, that, that really is, um, why a lot of people, um, you know, abuse alcohol or drugs or, or anything, um, any type of, um, addictive behaviors is to avoid, um, feeling the feelings that, you know, that we don't want to feel. And it's really about embodiment, you know, through the practice of yoga, you can really embody, um, those, the teachings and the feelings that were, excuse me, that we're having and creating an intention and having really focused awareness, you know, cause yoga, we're, we're being very, very present and we're working on the breath, which can be so very empower, empowering the, the breath and the, um, the mood is an indicator of the breath and the breath is an indicator of the mood. So really by changing the way that we're breathing, we can change our whole, um, the way that we're feeling and, um, energy goes where the mind goes. So yoga, um, I'm not saying that yoga should be a replacement for any type of recovery program. Um, but it can be a wonderful complement to it. So, um, continuing on with the conversation of Santosha, um, I just wanted to introduce, um, perhaps a few of you are, um, some of you are familiar with the book, the yoga sutras of Patanjali. And this is a, a book that, um, is very popular, um, about yoga philosophy. Um, the copy of the book that I have was, um, translated and commented, commentated by Sri Swami Sachidananda. And I really like this, um, this edition. Um, it's really wonderful. It has the uh, the Hindi, I'm sorry, the Sanskrit, and then everything um, translated and translated and commentated on in, in you know layman's terms, and I can understand it. Um, I'm not a a um, you know a an expert on the on the Yoga Sutras. I just find it quite interesting. Um, I'd like to um, study a little bit more on it, and I do find. So the yoga, the Patanjali, um, talked about, um, different on the the path of yoga and, you know, going all through it. And I've talked a little bit about that before, you know, with like the breath work and then asana, um, which is the the positions. So he takes you through in this book of the, the path, um, of yoga, um, of how you can achieve samadhi, um, enlightenment. And it's called, there's eight limbs of yoga which is, um, in Sanskrit, Ashtanga yoga. So that's what that is. And there are niyamas in the the yoga sutras and the niyamas are in the second um, limb on those eight limbs of yoga. And so like the niyamas are kind of recommended activities and habits um, for, you know, healthy living and spiritual enlightenment. And one of the niyamas is 
Santosha, which I wanted to talk to you about today. He um, talks about this in his in this book, and it's often translated as contentment. So he says that by contentment, supreme joy is gained. So as a result of contentment, one gains supreme joy. Here we should understand the difference between contentment and satisfaction. Contentment means just to be as we are without going to outside things for our happiness. If something comes, we let it come. If not, it doesn't matter. Contentment means neither to like nor dislike. So I really um, find it interesting um, on the the difference between contentment and satisfaction and how he how he describes contentment mean, meaning means neither to like or dislike and being okay with anything that's coming. So I was looking it up again on Mer- Merriam Webster online dictionary and satisfaction is defined as a fulfillment of a need or want. So when we're satisfied, we're happy because what we're, you know, maybe we wanted something, we have a like, we have a preference for something and that was fulfilled. So we had a need, um, wherever that may have come from, a need or a want, a desire, and this desire was filled, fulfilled in the way that we wanted it to be. Um, and in comparison, I was also looking up contentment. And interestingly enough, contentment on Merriam-Webster was a state of happiness and satisfaction. So it's a bit confusing because satisfaction is also used to describe contentment. However, according to Patanjali, they are quite different. Um, Contentment, as he said, um, is being okay with everything that's happening if it's quote unquote good or quote unquote bad, not having judgment towards it, letting it come and letting it be. So it's being okay with, um, you know, things that, that, you know, things that we dislike or like, and maybe being a little bit separate from that. Those are just, you know, emotions and feelings, but they're not really who we are. Those are learned things that we, you know, we like this person, but we don't like that person. But, you know, being content with everything and also keeping a positive attitude in difficult times. And it's really easy to keep a positive attitude when things are going well. However, not so easy when things are difficult. And I know this for myself that it's hard. Um, You know, I can be, you know, very peaceful and sometimes even meditating. But then, you know, when I get up, I'm, you know, I get into a mood or I start like yelling, you know, but I'm human, you know, it happens. So trying to, you know, keep a positive attitude or just maybe even in the past, perhaps if you would just automatically go into, um, you know, get angry or get upset, perhaps pause for a moment and realize and have some consciousness of, okay, you know, I'm getting mad right now. And maybe it'll still happen, but there's just all those little pauses between where you're very aware of how you're feeling like, well, I'm really angry right now. And I have not uh, mastered that. <laughs> so I still, I still have, um, you know, anger that, um, trying to really be very conscious and aware of. So I think that also, um, when I read this, I feel like it, you know, when you talk, talk about duality, you know, good, bad, hot, cold, you know, um, all those things that it's, it's kind of being distant from that and looking at things as oneness instead of as the differences, you know, we, we want to see similarities. So I really love Santosha. (laughs) It's one of my favorites, um, because, you know, it's being okay with what is and not wishing things were different because sometimes, um, speak for personal experience, you live, you're like, Oh, I just wish it was this way. And I wish it wasn't that. And why did he have to say that? And why can't my life be like this? And why can't it be like that? But just being okay and fully accepting reality and your life as it truly is, um, you know, seeing it and experiencing it as it truly is while living, you know, when, when we're living in a way that's not true to ourselves, we're not seeing our experiences clearly and objectively. And I definitely have lived that way in the past. 
you know, and we don't realize that what happens to us and, you know, when something happens that how we feel, you know, what we, what we, um, the feelings and the emotions come up, we can change that. And, you know, we are in control of that. So, um, Santosha, when I'm, when I teach, when I guide, um, yoga, um, I, you know, I, I encourage people. Sometimes I see people pushing and struggling to push themselves a little bit farther, but, you know, let's, let's be a little bit content on where we are right now and accepting and, and appreciating our, maybe our limitations right now. And this can be practices practiced, of course, you know, when you're practicing yoga and in your life, um, and Santosha can help you in your, you know, uncovery. I love that word. I got it from, I was reading, um, Charlotte Castle's, um, Beyond the 12 Steps, really, really loving this book. And she talks about uncovery instead of recovery, because you're uncovering things that were, you know, hidden underneath. So we can bring more joy in our lives, more gratitude, acceptance, mindfulness, and, you know, and less grasping and trusting that we will receive what we need exactly when we need it. And that's such a beautiful thing, you know? And so maybe you can think about now what opportunities do you have in your life to practice Santosha now, in your daily life when you're normally not, not accepting reality as it is, how can you see and experience things the way that they really are and be okay with that? It doesn't mean that you like it or you dislike it. You're just being okay with what comes. So it's a little bit like being non unattached. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, I am going to guide you into a short relaxation and practicing some affirmations that perhaps you can take away. And these are affirmations for surrender and contentment. So we're going to take a quick break and yep, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Awaken to your radiant, authentic self. For over 15 years, Soul Purpose Advocate Nancy Monson has been focused on leading change in the lives of those looking to live their true purpose. She is devoted to supporting people and living a soul-directed life every day. Let Nancy help you overcome fear, worry, and doubt. Visit EverydaySpirituality.com to learn how Nancy can be your Soul Purpose Advocate. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit JenRoyster.com for more information. Get ready to experience Truth Talk Radio with host Deb Acker. Tune in to Truth Talk Radio each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com to illuminate the truth in your daily life as you experience life, love, and abundance from a whole new perspective. This hit show will leave you feeling lighter and bring you into a place of infinite possibilities every day in every way. Visit TruthTalkRadioShow.com for upcoming transformative topics and guests. Get ready to rid yourself of all that is weighing you down and holding you back from living the life you want for yourself. Coming Clean, The Art of Transparency with Katherine Moss is a hit show for women in recovery who are ready to live life on purpose. Tune in and let Katherine help you live your truth one day at a time. Live each Tuesday, 9 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Hi, this is Leslie Fontaine, and my show is Sheer Alchemy on TransformationTalkRadio.com. 
When we're bogged down with our emotions, the hardships that plague us in our relationships, at work, our finances, we literally can't see the higher plane where we could be operating from. Tune in to Leslie Fontaine, Sheer Alchemy on TransformationTalkRadio.com. There are so many resources out there for meditation. But did you know that Atana's Heart Earth Healing Meditation is available for you for free? Yes, that's right. You can receive this free healing meditation today from Atana Vadili. All you need to do is visit his website, atanamethod.com. That's A-T-A-A-N-A method.com and sign up. You will receive your free meditation instantly. That's atanamethod.com. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Coming Clean Radio with me, Catherine Artimas. So today I'm talking to you about yoga, surrender, and santosha. So we talked about a little bit about how yoga and recovery have so many parallels and why it's important to surrender in recovery. What can it mean for you? And I also spoke a little bit about santosha which is contentment and accepting, fully accepting reality and just accepting things the way that they are. And this was something that was always so difficult for me because I really wanted to, oh, it was only this way and only that way. And, but really, um, being fully aware and conscious of, you know, reality and it's very empowering. So I'd like to, um, finish off the show with a short guided affirmation and, I recommend if you're driving, maybe not to do it right now or to keep your eyes open when you're driving or operating heavy machinery. And so I'm going to be um, guiding you into a short relaxation and then using an affirmation for affirmations for healing, for self-healing from Swami Kriyananda. And again, the affirmation uses the word God. However, I really... um, encourage you to use any word that resonates with you. And that can be your higher power or universe or divine, anything that, um, that has, it holds meaning for you. Um, so I'll be offering a, an affirmation and first time I'll repeat it and you can repeat it loud the second time at a normal voice. And then the third time whispering, And then the fourth time, repeating it mentally to yourself. And at each time when you repeat the the affirmation, bring your focus to the point between the eyebrows. This is where the prefrontal lobes are. Um, And this is where, this is the seat, um, this is like the the newest um, part of the brain. And this is um, where a lot of our creativity and concentration can come from. So it's also very, um, it can be, um, through meditation, it can be, um, increased. So now I off, I invite you to close your eyes and get comfortable. And you can be either be lying down or sitting in a chair or on the floor with your back nice and straight, relaxing the belly And relaxing your chest, shoulders down away from your ears. And your chin parallel to the floor. Feeling grounded in the sitting bones and also feeling lifted through the crown of the head. Starting to be aware of the breath where you can feel it the most easily in the body. And finding your center. Taking a few breaths. We're going to do a few measured breathing. And this is wonderful to do anywhere. You can do this uh, while driving, train, or at work. So we're going to inhale for four counts in through the nose. And then hold the breath for four counts. And then exhale the breath through the nose for four counts. So it's all nose breathing. 
Okay, let's begin three times. Inhale. Hold. And exhale. Inhale. Hold. And exhale. Inhale. Hold. And exhale. And now breathing normally. Bring your focus to the point between the eyebrows. And first time, we're repeating it back in a loud voice. Through life's mightiest storms, I am contented. For I hold in my heart God's peace. Now, in a normal speaking voice, through life's mightiest storms, I am contented. For I hold in my heart God's peace. And now, in a whisper, through life's mightiest storms, I am contented. For I hold in my heart God's peace. And now, silently to yourselves, bringing the energy to the point between the eyebrows. Through life's mightiest storms, I am contented. For I hold in my heart God's peace. Now take an inhalation through the nose. A complete exhalation through the mouth and let it all go. And now open the eyes. I hope you enjoyed that. And you can use any type of affirmation you like. It's helpful to use that, um, that sequence, first repeating it very loud to yourself, and then speaking voice, whispering, and then mentally to really bring it into that area of the body of the between the point between the eyebrows. Um, it's a very, very powerful place. So, um, yeah. And if you, um, would like to learn a little bit more about meditation, um, I have some guided meditations and I also have some videos on learning a few techniques. If you're interested on my website at katherinemoss.com. Um, yeah, so this brings us to the end of the show. Next week, I will have Candace Plator on the show, and she will be talking about a very interesting subject. She'll be talking about alternatives to the 12 steps. So anyone who's looking um, for recovery and is not down with some of the mainstream um, methods will might be interested in um, you know what she has to say. She's um, is very, very, very knowledgeable. Um, and she'll also be talking about, um, you know, those of she, um, she talks a lot about, um, those who, um, you know, live and love addicts and how to take care of themselves. And, um, and, um, you know, it's a very difficult time to, you know, be there. And, um, while someone is, you know, going actively going through addiction. Um, so yeah, tune in next week that for that, that's, um, I think it's July 26th really looking forward to having her on the show. So I want to thank you all for tuning in to Coming Clean. Please join me every Tuesday at 12 Eastern, 11 Central and 9 a.m. Pacific time. Have a wonderful week and I'll see you back here next time. I want to leave you with one quote and I think is really nice on surrender. Surrender to what is, let go of what was and have faith in what will be. Thank you. Namaste. You've been listening to Coming Clean, the art of transparency with Catherine Moss. Join Catherine and countless other women in recovery stepping into their truth and supporting one another living life on purpose. 
Tune in each Tuesday, 9 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com or visit the archives at ComingCleanRadio.com.